I am Shi Jagaba from Tohoku University, Iridis, and I am a doctor, uh, actually a surgeon. And uh, after having the Great East Japan earthquake, we established this International Research Institute and I became a professor of a uh, very unique division, Division of International Cooperation for Disaster Medicine. Uh, do you understand what that means? <laughs> Actually, this is a very unique department uh, in our science and I, I, I appreciate the, our mentor, or the president of Tohoku University having such a very unique name of my division. So today my talk is about the disaster medical and public health management as DRR and DRM. DRR and DRM means uh, disaster risk reduction and disaster risk management and which is very frequently used in the society of international disaster mitigation or risk reduction. So today I'm going to use this answer pad. Answer pad, you know uh, how to use, uh, in order to customize accustom you uh, to use this device, please uh, click any number and OK after I told you start, OK? Uh, let's start. So push any number and press OK. So I can see the number of you, a uh, number of people who is sleeping, okay. So there seems to be some 30 or 40 people there, okay. There are only 26 people. I don't think it is 26. Is it right? Okay. 27. 27. So press any number and okay. Okay. That's it. Okay. Thank you very much. Then uh, select your age, okay? <laughs> Let's start, okay? Age under 20, age 21 to 30, over 30, not disclosing. You, you have your freedom not disclosing your age, okay? Okay, uh, the board is reaching 26, so I stop. This. Oh, l let's see. The uh, age over 31 is the uh, most frequent people in this room. Okay. Okay. Now select your gender. Uh, you have your freedom, not disclosing. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's start. So you are voting very quickly. Okay. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Selecting your. Okay. Now we are closing. Okay. Male, female, not disclosing. Okay. <laughs> then uh, this is a very unique question. I did the same question to the students in the uh, Faculty of Engineering. The master course students of the faculty uh, engineers. So what do you think li the life is? The life produce, reproduces itself, life dies, life breathes, life eats, life excretes, not, not, do, don't press in this time, okay? Life excretes, life has gene, life has soul, life evades physics, life distinguishes self and non-self. And you can choose as many as you like. So if you choose one, two and five, then press one, two, five and okay. Okay, D did you get? So let's start, here we go. So it's a multiple choice. So what do you think the life is? What is the difference from life from non-life? Okay, 26 people has already voted. Thank you very much. So you have this tendency. So this number eight, the life obeys physics. The life, of course, obeys the rule of physics. But, you know, this is a very famous physician, physical scientist, uh, scientist in physics, uh, Erwin Schrodinger. 
So the students of the Department of Engineering knows or all knows this name. And he says that living matter <coughs> evades the decay to thermodynamical equilibrium by homeostatically maintaining negative entropy in an open system. This is his words the, in What is Life in 1944, before the end of the World War II. So he thinks that life is a very unique system that evades the physics. Then, after knowing this, how do you think the universe and the Earth is living or not. Let's start. Okay, 23. Press OK after you choose. Okay, 25. Thanks. So, uh, so you are thinking that the universe and the earth is living. Is it true? I don't know. I'm not asking you the right answer. You, ha you have to seek your right answer. So uh, today's my talk is uh, the health in HFA and the change of health risks in disaster, health facilities and functions in mega disasters and proposal to HFA 2. And uh, Hyogo framework for action. In next March, here in Sendai, we will have the World Conference for Disaster Risk Reduction. And uh, the Hyogo framework for action will be revised into HFA2. You all know that this disaster happens. After disaster's onset, you have to respond. We have to respond. The, it's a response phase. After response, it comes the recovery phase. And then the reconstruction phase comes, and the next disaster will come. So we, we know that disaster comes in cycle. As we can see here, it's uh, statistics of UNISDR that the number of uh, floods and storms and droughts and uh, extreme temperatures are very increasing in statistics. Why do you think uh, that disasters are increasing? One the global climate change. Two, urbanization of population. Three, combined technological problems. Four, an increase of reports and statistics. Five, something else. So it's a multiple choice. So please select your answer. Uh, let's, let's start. Thank you very much. Oh, there are 29 people here. <laughs> okay, okay. So you are thinking that uh, global climate change or urbanization or increase of reports and statistics. Yes, it's probably, yes. And uh, as, you know, as you know that uh, the combined accidents like in the Fukushima nuclear power plants it may be uh, more complicated disasters in the world. And we actually don't know why the disasters are increasing. And we have to know, uh, we have to know the common terminology about the disk disaster risk reduction. These are the uh, world def definition by the Philippines uh, Department, Department of Health. Uh, Health Emergency Management System. The uh, Philippines are the country of disasters and they are very uh, accustomed to organize the response system in the, by themselves. And they are defining the words used in the risk reduction situation like this. So we all, lo all know that hazard is different from disasters. Hazard is uh, any potential threat to public safety and or public health. And the risks is a consequence of hazard interacting with community. And the emergency is an any actual threat to public safety and or public health or even for the human uh, individual health. Or, and the 
important here is uh, the de definition of disaster. Disaster is an emergency in which the humanitarian needs are beyond local capacity. Not only a town, not only a city can cope with disaster. So dis uh, disaster requires the, uh, the response and recovery operation uh, managed by the national or international level. And the vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities is the factors which impact negatively on risks, increasing the severity and magnitude of consequences. And the capacity. Capacity is a positive determinant of risks that relate to the ma manageability of those consequences. Response capacity is measured as readiness. And the, we have to know the community. Community is the people, property, services, environment, livelihood, the, the elements exposed to hazards. So we all know the factors, okay? And uh, this is a question. Uh, have you ever heard of Hyogo Framework for Action? Let's start. Thanks. Okay, so now 25 people. So uh, half of you know the HFA and half of you know, do, don't. So it's quite natural. Probably the teachers knows HFAs, may not. Okay, and the, my understanding of Hyogo Framework of Action is illustrated here. It's describing you have to know your risk, you have to reduce your risk, and you have to prepare to act. Okay, and this is uh, uh, HFA from two 2005 to 15. The buildings, the resilience of nations and communities to disasters. Here we have communities. Okay, and, and since I'm a medical doctor, I focused on the health. And uh, reading through the HFA, only three words among the 1,100. 30 words of HFA. The three wor words about, uh, of health is uh, written in this long sentence in one, only one paragraph. The, it is saying that integrate disaster reduction planning into the health sector. So it's a health sector. And promote the goal of hospitals safe from disaster by ensuring that all new hospitals are built with a level of resilience that strengthens their capacity to remain functional in disaster situations and implement mitigation measures to reinforce existing health facilities, particularly those providing primary health care. You know, the sentences of the United Nations is very long. They are including this and this and this and this, okay. Uh, but they included only health in, only in this paragraph. And uh, it is saying that a risk reduction people should let know the people in the health sector about the disc re disaster risk reduction. So uh, we, I organized uh, an international symposium in Washington, D.C. And uh, you can see the result of that symposium in this paper. And uh, that professionals of health professionals recommended that health sector should rather know the people of the disaster risk reduction about the health. And uh, we have to know your risk, the risk in the disaster, health risk in disaster. The le Japan has uh, many lessons from past disaster. The lessons from a 1921 great counter earthquake many people were killed by fire because you know that Japanese houses were made of paper and woods. And lessons from 1978 Miyagi earthquakes, you can see the many collapsed buildings and uh, fallen block, bleak uh, walls. And in 1995, we had a great Hanshin Awaji earthquake. At that time, uh, most of the people were killed by asphyxia by the collapse of the building. So this changed the building code in Japan that buildings should be quake-proof. 
After this, uh, Japan, all the Japanese buildings are built in, uh, according to the building code that endure at least once of the level 6 earthquake. Okay? And after this, uh, the Japanese Association for Disaster Medicine was established, created. So we have three life-saving lessons from past disasters. The first one is legal enactment of building cores for earthquake proof to prevent death from fire and collapse. And the second one is a national establishment of disaster medical management. And the third one is early warning and evacuation. So, I will talk about the medical system. At the great Hanshinawaja earthquake, we had no disaster-specific hospital. So, we decided to establish the disaster-based hospitals. Since this is 1995 or 6, before HFA, Japanese government and Japanese medical professions established by this, not according to the HFA, but created by our own lessons learned from mega disaster. And a lack of medical care within 72 hours, we established DMAT, Disaster Medical Assistant Team. And no wide area transportation was available at the time. We established a staging care unit and wide transportation network. And uh, we established the emergency medical information system to share the information. And we established disaster medical coordinator. Disaster-based hospitals provides intensive care of multiple injury, crash syndromes, and severe burn in disaster. And it responds to incoming and outgoing transportation and provides DMAT and provides medical resource to affected hospitals surrounding it. And there, is, there are six, more than 600 disaster-based hospitals throughout Japan, and one national center, and 55 central disaster-based hospitals in each prefecture, and so on. And there are many hospitals providing DMAT and emergency center. The eastern part of Japan has disaster-based hospitals like this, and the epicenter of the Great East Japan earthquake is located, last rated in a star. And uh, this is where the Fukushima nuclear power plant is. And here we are in Sendai and Ishinomaki area. Disaster medical assistant team, DMAT, this is a unique DMAT system in Japan, not the same DMAT in the United States or other countries. Uh, there, are, there are more than 1,000 teams in Japan before Great East Japan earthquake. And it arrives in the affected area within 24 hours and saves the lives from preventable, de preventable death until 72 hours when the local health care recovers. So at that time, the government itself thought that the local health care will return up, uh, in about uh, the 72 hours, three days. Uh, Japanese DMAT consists of a medical doctor, a nurse, and a pharmacist, and a logistician, total of four or five people uh, with self-standing material and vehicle. So uh, the four or five is a maximum of the, uh, of the, uh, the compact car accommodates. The specific training for the confined space medicine and wide area transportation. So the training scene of the DMAT is like this. So there are five, five people in one team and they are trained in a confined space medicine and uh, they are trained about the staging, managing the staging care unit and uh, helping the wide area transportation. It, was, uh, it is uh, administrated by the Ministry of Health and Labor and Welfare. So the DMAT headquarters and base hospitals are managed by the ministry. This is a role of DMAT before the 311. And uh, so that DMAT can go to the everywhere to help the local medical treatment and helping the uh, Headquarter in the disaster base hospital and headquarters in the SCU and the local government. Aircrafts were provided 
by the self-defense force. So, uh, but uh, you have to recognize that the capacity of the, even this big airplane can uh, carry the eight patients if the patient is so severe and that requires many tubes and equipments surrounding the beds. And these are the emergency medical information system in Japan before Great East Japan earthquake. So it provides the information and the capacity of the disaster base hospital. Sorry for this Japanese, but the, these are the disaster base hospital within the to, uh, within Miyagi prefecture. So it indicates that what hospitals is a nuclear, uh, which hospitals can uh, accept the patients exposed to the nuclear disaster. And the disaster medical coordinator uh, understands what kind of health needs in the affected area and what kind of relief and aids can provide to the affected areas. So, and coordinating the relief from the supporters and, and transducing the health needs to the supporters. Miyagi Prefecture assigned six coordinators in 2010, just one year before the Great East Japan earthquake, but Iwate and Fukushima did not. The first coordinator was uh, assigned in Hyogo Prefecture, where Hanshin Awaji earthquake occurred in 1995. So two years later, Hyogo Prefecture assigned the medical coordinator, but only four prefecture followed that. So, Hearing this, what do you think uh, most unique system of Japanese medical response? So please push your number. Here we go. So probably uh, the it's a single, single choice. Thank you very much. So many people thought that disaster base hospital is very unique system in Japan. But these are the very unique system too. And uh, without the disaster base hospital, no DMAT can be, exist pre probably. And uh, without the disaster base hospital, uh, the SCU and wider area transportation was also impossible. So, uh, systematizing the medical response system, the disaster base hospital is a base uh, fundamental. Okay, you are right. And uh, uh, we have to prepare to act. The, we have to know what is the situation in real disaster. In the Great East Japan earthquake, 93 per people uh, percent uh, of death was due to drowning. So uh, if you are not so much ready for the uh, tsunami situation, do not see. Okay, this is a movie that is affecting the Kesenuma city. Some fun. Yes, just a few minutes. You see, uh, this is a view from the, probably the roof of the three-story building or four-story building. The water comes up very quickly
so that people are evacuating to the higher roofs. The water is just close. Yes, you can see some fire occurring in the uh, debris. Okay. So uh, we have to know that the early warning and early evacuation system is very important too. Okay. And the, uh, the age of the victims, the, the right side of the panel is the death uh, divided by the ages at the great Hanshinawaja earthquake. And they are the, the elder people were the victims. Uh, we have to know the vulnerability of the elderly in disaster because they often have poorer limited mobility and they often live in smaller high density or poorer quality housing and they are more socially isolated. They're less, they're less likely to seek assistance and they fear of being placed in care. And reduce, they have reduced financial resources and they rely on others for cares. And they have less service access. So uh, this is not for only from Japan. This is uh, the, uh, uh, presented at the Iridis Friday Forum uh, by the researchers in University of Sydney. So they are uh, thinking uh, that, that this problem is very common in the world. And that also we have the, some difficulty in statistics in disaster. Right, left side is a very earlier statistics from the Japanese government, the cabinet office, declared that 93% uh, of the people were killed by the drowning. But the actual the statistics by the Ministry of Health and Labor, according to the death diagnosis report, the 22% of the death was by the injury. So the after, after effect of the uh, tsunami caused some severe injury and just not from the drowning. So uh, we have to know the difficulty of the statistics in the disastrous situation. But it took time that this is a uh, 2012 report of the ministry. So it takes one year or more. And we have to know the age of the victims, uh, that uh, even uh, young people like 20s are killed in disaster. At the time of Hanshinawaji, the very young people were killed under the collapse of the building. This is a reason why you have to build a building very strong. But the misleading in evacuation causes the tragic events to the children. So this element, uh, kindergarten sent out the children to their home, to the seaside. And this is a misleading. And uh, the bus was found broken and, uh, in the sea seaside and the many people were killed. So at the where the bus was found, um, many mourning was there. And the, uh, another misleading in the evacuation uh, occurred in this elementary school located by the side of the river. So there are two ways to evacuate. The pre-decided ways to evacuate is this way to the red. However, nobody knows the tsunami is coming from this side. So, uh, 74 out of 800, uh, 100 children were killed by the tsunami. And uh, this school had never been inundated and was supposed to be an evacuation center for level one tsunami. And that this is a uh, picture of that elementary school. So uh, the construction of this elementary school also did not see the uh, risk of level two tsunami or if they have three-story or four-story building with some roof 
evacuation center that, that may save the life of the children and the other people. So the, uh, the, we have to know the damage to the children is not the actual damage by the tsunami. Uh, there were 466 deaths in age under 10 and 419 deaths in age 10 to 19. There were 241 orphans and 1,000 children lost their parents. And 25,000 children had to move to the other schools. So the damage to the children doesn't come through the not only from the direct effect of the earthquake and tsunami, but the indirect effect for the, from the evacuation or relocation will occur. So t children rely on adults and if they lo lost a family or fa family unification also cause a problem and difficult to die. Uh, children are difficult to diagnose correctly and patients cannot always declare symptoms and they are not always typical. And there are discrepancy of symptoms and severities and uh, they are very easy to get depressed or if they have some life-threatening events, they, have, they will develop PTSD. And poor physical and mental margin and rapid change will occur. And uh, the, uh, the, it is also difficult to say what the normal child is. So uh, this is a questionnaire again. Uh, what do you think the vulnerable in disaster? One, the elderly. Two, the children or pregnant women. Four, the people with disability, physical and mental. And five, patients with chronic disease, foreigners or travelers, other than above. So let's start. Here we go. Okay. So uh, what do, uh, you can choose multiple. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so you think these are the vulnerable. So the, uh, the foreigners and travelers are not so much vulnerable, do you think? Or the people who are healthy is not so vulnerable, you were thinking. In we have many types of hazards. So there are natural hazards, societal hazards, and technological hazards, and biological hazards. And the, you have to understand this equation that risk is a uh, hazard times vulnerability, or as Professor Okumura says, hazards, exposure, and vulnerability divided by the capacities. In these hazards, nobody is so strong against the hazards. Everybody can be a vulnerability, and everybody may have a vulnerability to some kind of hazards. So we, ha we all know, we have to know the, how to decrease the vulnerability and how to decrease the exposure to the hazards and how to increase the capacities. And, uh, very unique situation in the Great East Japan earthquake is that health facilities are also damaged by the disaster. Hospitals standing in the seaside coastal area of the Pacific Ocean uh, was devastated by the tsunami. In this Ogatsu hospital, three stories were all inundated, just flashed out by the tsunami and all patients were killed and 66 out of 70 medical staff were killed by the tsunami. And the, this Rikuzen Takata Hospital, her fourth story was inundated, and uh, 12 patients were killed. Eight out of 82 medical staff were killed. And 170 people were isolated on the roof of the hospital. And the uh, Ishinomaki Municipal Hospital 120 patients and 250 medical patients were isolated for three days 
in that hospital without the power supply. And uh, Shizugawa Hospital, 76 out of 100 patients were killed and four medical staff were killed. And uh, during the waiting time, seven people were died of hypothermia. There was no fuel. And Futaba Hospital uh, was located very close to the nuclear power plant and it was forced to evacuate, evacuate. And misinformation created the situation of unattended people by the medical staffs. And uh, these 440 patients were transported to the evacuation center to the inland, but uh, 45 people died during the transportation. So this movie shows the uh, you can see the, the hospital is the only building standing in that area. So the hospital should be the last building standing in the disaster. But the hospital has also some vulnerabilities. If they don't have the emergency power supply, if they don't have emergency food supply, or many other things to be improved. Okay. Another health problem in mega-scale mega disaster is a disaster-related death. Not only the direct effect of the disaster, impact of the hazard, the death up to one year or two years after the, the impact of the disaster, the many people are dying because of the uh, exhaustion during the evacuation. The Ministry of Reconstruction reported that more than 90% are over 70s and uh, men and women are equal risk related to the uh, disaster related death. And 60% has some comorbidity like a diabetes or hypertension or other cancer. And the cause of death, including the 13 suicides uh, within the 1,200 uh, 1, people, the physical and mental expiration during the evacuation centers or during the transportation to the evacuation sites or latency of primary care because of the hospital unavailability and the physical and mental stress from the earthquake and tsunami. And location of death, 30% of people died in the hospital and healthcare facilities, and 30% of people died in the home, and 10% died in the evacuation center. So these are the disaster-related death. We have 3,000 people died after the Great East Japan earthquake. So how we can decrease the number of this kind of disaster-related death? This is a very important uh, question. The, uh, the lessons summarized lessons are from the 2011 Great East Japan earthquake. The prepared system of disaster-based hospital, DMAT, SCU, and wide area transportation, EMS, has saved many lives efficiently. Actually, this is true. Without this, uh, the further confusion will occur. And the change of medical needs in physical and mental health and emergency, emerging problems for preventable death is uh, another problem. So uh, at the Great Hanshin Awaja earthquake, the DMAT was trained to uh, deal with uh, acute physical injury. However, the medical needs are different from that. So the care for the acute injury also saved many lives, but there was not so much uh, patient. There, there were not so, ma so many patients that requires acute care of the injury, but the people need the medical treatment of their chronic disease or another onset of the problem and the mental problems. So hospitals, patients and workers are also the victims of disaster, but they have to be exposed to the loss of family and friends and they have to deal with the physical and mental loss of stress 
and uh, the, the local hospital should deal with the surge of the medical and public health needs after evacuation. So the request from, of, of course, and also they have to uh, answer the request from supporting teams. Uh, so are they really supporting or disturbing? And the unmet medical needs. So as I told you that uh, not only the acute care of the injuries, but the chronic illness, like home oxygen, the people with home oxygen treatment uh, lost their o oxygen tanks. Uh, the people who need uh, hemodialysis, they lack of dialyzers and fluids. There are the patients with hypertension, diabetic, a loss of daily drugs and insulins uh, cause a big problem. Uh, even if you lose your glasses or teeth brushes, it causes a health problem. And crowded shelter without enough heat, food and water, fear of outbreak of diarrhea and pneumonia. And that's, these are called infectious disease. So uh, the out, we have to prevent the outbreak of the infectious disease the loss of privacy causes a lot of problem, and quarrel and harassment. And loss of family and job cause the psychological depression, alcoholism, PTSD, and loss of gas supply. People uh, make a row in the gas station, sleeping in a car to wait fuel. And we have to warn the people, don't stay in the car. You will develop deep vein thrombosis. Deep brain thrombosis, if you are sitting in the car seat for a long time, your blood will coagulate in your vein and uh, comes to your lung and make your breathe very difficult. And the lack of substitutes of local medical staffs. These are the problem in the medical response. And I just want to briefly mention about the health emergencies in Typhoon Haiyan. That was November last year. The death toll is 7,300. November 11, it hit uh, the Philippines November 8. So three days later, national, uh, it was declared that national calamity. Cargoes of medicine were, came into Tacloban area and medical treatment uh, was started. And the Department of Health and WHO collaborated the, to register domestic and international relief teams and coordinate the needs and relieves. And uh, they are very much cautiously watched the outbreak of infectious diseases such as tetanus, water-related infectious disease, respiratory disease, pediatric disease, and vector-borne diseases such as leprospirosis, dengue fever, and rabies. And, uh, in collaboration with forensic medicine specialists, burial with dignity was ordered. And the precautions to prevent secondary infection from a person who dealt with a cause, uh, dead body, that if you have handled the dead body with your hand and eat something, that will cause a problem. And November 14, uh, DOH frozen the price of essential medicines. In the Philippines, the price is free market, but the government ordered the, um, to freeze the price of these medicines. And the president ordered the sanitary action by local governments to pre uh, protect your health. You have to have a clear water and uh, sanitation and hygiene by the sewage system. So uh, these are the wash sector, wash uh, groups. And meanwhile, there are many people who evacuated to Manila metropolit metropolitan area, and uh, they, were, they established the field clinic to the airport in Manila. And they uh, announced that uh, to provide uh, breast milk as much as possible, because uh, to avoid the infection. And then in November 22, WHO and DOH provided mass vaccination to prevent uh, the uh, outbreak of the polio and measles. Actually, the measles had an outbreak when I visited Manila in January. And uh, especially the, the peop uh, target people were children under five. 
and generate, generate our gas and uh, operate a refrigerator to store the vaccines. Uh, it was named the cold chain in collaboration with WHO and USAID. In November 24, uh, the b famous boxer won the game of uh, the World Boxing Organization and it was very encouraging to the people. Uh, in, in terms of Great East Japan earthquake, the baseball team in Sendai won the championship in Japan, also encouraged. And, uh, you know, last year, the figure skater, uh, Hanyu Yuzuru, won the gold medal on, in the Olympics. Such kind of encouragement is very helpful. And in November 25, uh, the health emergency reporting system counted 75 DOH teams and 60 international teams and uh, came into the affected area, but the uh, damage was so huge. We investigate the area of Takroban and Palo city, which was the most uh, of the victims were located. And before going to the Takloban area, we identified the health facilities, health-related facilities uh, uh, from the geographical mapping and identified the hospitals and visited the, each hospital. Uh, these are the hospitals uh, in the Palo, and uh, many hospitals were damaged by wind. The seashore had a storm surge, and that the inside of the land uh, has a damage by the wind. And the damage by the wind and heavy rain uh, devastated the function of the hospital. This is an only hospital who has a uh, ward of uh, psychiatry, but this ward was devastated. They have still some cage-like wards. And this is a br brand new buildings uh, built uh, like three months old. New buildings and facilities were broken new operation room and new facility for the food. And this is the largest uh, medical center in that region, but uh, it was also devastated, but uh, kept learning outpatient, inpatient care and accepted community referrals. And this is uh, some good, uh, good practice. They, protected the glass window in front of the intensive care unit by hardboard uh, two days before the typhoon hit. And uh, rooftops were broken, but uh, they protected the X-ray, MRI, and uh, laboratories in the center of the building and uh, kept running out patient, inpatient. Medical records were relocated to the third floor and protected by the flooding. This, this hospital has a very beautiful glass window uh, in the front, but the older window was, window was broken by the strong wind. And the building cause of the Philippines uh, requires uh, the gl all the glasses should endure the 200 km per hour wind, but the wind actually strength it was 300 kilometers. And this building kept only city working in the area because the city was located very deep inside of the building. And this hospital was well, totally closed, but the uh, MSF, the Doctors Without Borders, came in and took over this hospital and running the outpatient clinic. And it was supposed to reopen in May, so I think they are reopening the... Oh, sorry about that. Uh, so. Uh, because of the time is limited, I just wanted to uh, strengthen about the coordination in the Philippines were well done, probably because they are understanding English and uh, the health sector, uh, including the DOH and WHO and international teams uh, were well coordinated. But the, so uh, let's skip. And uh, the, my proposal to the HFA2, the next world conference, is listed uh, in this paper. So we are insisting that we have to increase the quality of life, including the health, 
facilities and healthcare problem, program. Uh, the increasing the health resiliency is uh, one, of, one way to, the, to reduce the risk, risk of disaster. These are the groups. So proposal to the uh, next framework is written in this paper. And just want a quick Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is the end of my talk. Thank you. We have some time for interaction. Yes, two gentlemen. You said, I have a question about the demand. You said, long span treatment and healthcare system is more important. Some demand when Greta is Japan earthquake occurred. So, how do you think demand uh, system should be improved, and what kind of new system is uh, needed? The one big advantage of the Jap Japanese DMAT is they are very ready to go and quick to. Uh, go into the affected area within 24 hours, but they have limited resource of like food for themselves or uh, equipments to treat the patients. So the, the time limitation is usually 72 hours for themselves. But the DMAT is well coordinated by the DMAT headquarters, so they are succeeded by the following demon coming in to the same area. And that uh, transducing the information about that area and uh, th this kind of re relay operation improved the stay of the DMATs until the local medical, he local health care recovers. So it is, a, it is called lining of the DMAT, conse consequent lining of the DMAT, like 72 hours, 72 hours, 72 hours. So this, this kind of relay operation is very important. And this is a new uh, operation procedure for the DMATs, is already established. Thank you for an excellent presentation. My question really relates to the roles of universities and that we have a community of young people and not so young people. Yeah. How or what do you think we, we can do to prepare in terms of our role uh, in the universities? Uh, from the medical point of view, the university hospital is uh, usually the base, uh, very uh, functional and a centralized tertiary hospital in that area. So the role of the university hospital is providing the uh, medical assistance to substitute the local workers. Uh, actually, Tohoku University was continuously sending the substitute of the local workers so that local workers can take rest and uh, can go out to, the, to see the local people who is more accustomed to see the local doctors. So this is one role of the university hospital to organize the medical relief to, in the disaster. Another one is uh, university as an academic. And uh, we are the research institute that includes the uh, department or uh, division of disaster medicine. So we are now establishing the new paradigm of the disaster medicine and a new way of medical relief to that affected area and how we can coordinate the medical relief better in, in, in terms of uh, disaster, or we can cooperate with other faculties uh, so that uh, we, are, we know the characters of, of the natural disaster or social disaster or other technical disasters so that uh, we can cope with the uh, disastrous situation. Yes. Yes, there's no back. 
Um, one problem you mentioned is that there's a lack of, uh, during an earthquake, there's a lack of medical coordination and information sharing. This seems to be a common problem in, in disasters, in terms of both warning, evacuation, also in terms of relief. So I was wondering why, why, why do you think that pro problem arose and has it been addressed since the earthquake? Sure. Uh, the number of the uh, prefectures uh, who assi which assigned the medical coordinator was drastically increased after the Great East Japan earthquake. Right, it is right now uh, the 80% or 90% of the prefectures ha have already assigned the disaster medical and public health coordinators. And we have the class, uh, we have the training course of the medical coordinators uh, like uh, on-desk simulation or uh, incident command system training. Uh, and we are certifying the medical and public health care coordinators. Yes, um, as a foreign or international organization rolling into the Philippines, like particularly in Papua, what was the extent of collaboration or coordination with you two between the local government unit and the national government unit, knowing that there is political differences, because that was the experience in Papua? Yes. Uh, the difficulties in the political situation in Tacloban and from the national government and between the local government is a very local problem. But the, the, at the time of disaster, it is very important to know the, the you have to have the health sector meeting. In this sector meeting, the, everybody who is related to the health gathers in one place discuss what is the need and what is you can do for that relief. So it is important, very important to uh, get your information in this sector meeting and provide the relief. And the, you, you have the political problem within that area is a very difficult situation, I know. But uh, you have to overcome this political situation. Actually, the the, the governmental party comes in this way, but the other, other political party uh, from the uh, uh, Marcos, Marcos uh, party comes to, into another area providing the medical and relief goods uh, to that local area. So this, there, are ma there are many problems, but you have to coordinate and uh, combine your power to relieve the people of the affected people. You have to join the health se sector meeting to make the efficient relief. Thanks. Um, you talked quite a bit about the mental health impacts of disaster. And I was wondering um, how mental health issues are specifically accounted for within the medical response and disaster-based hospitals and the, the whole system. In the US, uh, we don't always do a good job incorporating and institutionalizing mental health issues in policies and so perhaps we can learn. Yes, uh, thank you for your question. I just answer your quick, quick, uh, question quickly that uh, since the mental health is a big issue after the great Hanshin Awaji earthquake in 1995, the mental health people like a psychiatrist uh, or uh, uh, psychologists were already aware that uh, mental health issue will occur very quickly and uh, lasts very longly to, from the Great East Japan earthquake. So they, they uh, organized the uh, mental health care teams <coughs> to provide the mental health care in the affected areas. And they are uh, doing the surveillance of the mental health issue in the affected area in the community base and uh, they are still working in the mental health care teams. Uh, many uh, community-based uh, surveillance of the mental health issues and uh, provide the, these cares for the mental health issues. And the Japanese Association of the Me uh, Psychiatrists uh, is now establishing a dis disaster psychiatry assistant team, a DPAT. And, and to provide the mental health care in the disaster, coming disaster. And uh, thank you very much for your question and comments. And 
it is that is true that uh, the society that is not pr well prepared for the disaster is more vulnerable to the disaster impacts then the government itself loses their function to prepare to the future disasters so this is a vicious cycle of the society to be vulnerable to the disasters so the the international societies including the united nations are now planning to incorporate the disaster risk reduction with the development goals. So this is a reason why the March conference is in March in Sendai, because uh, the sustainable development goals will be held in uh, Janu sep September in next year. So before, the, uh, de before defining the development goals, uh, the disaster risk reduction will be discussed in Sendai beforehand. So in to combine the development goals and the disaster risk reduction is a one big issue in the international society. That will uh, make the society more capacity to build a future resi resilience. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Yoga.